Welcome to the Golf Virtuosos podcast with me, James Jankowski. Yesterday, I was lucky enough to sit down with one of the world's top putting specialists, both in coaching and research, Dr. Paul Hurrian. Those of you that don't know Paul, he has coached some of the best players in the world and is founder and owner of Quintic Sports. They've developed biomechanics software, and when it comes to putting, they've developed the ball roll software and newly developed the overhead putt tracking software. If you wanna learn more about putting, and if you are a bit of a data nerd like me, then this is a good podcast for you to listen to. We sat down for longer than expected, so this has been split into two parts. Part two, we talk about acceleration and the effect that it can have on impact ratio. And we also talk about Paul's new software, the overhead putt tracker. And we talk about a few things about breaking putts. So listen in and hopefully you learn as much from Paul as I have over the years. I guess that also leads nicely on. You mentioned about the ball and the insert and that sort of thing. So one thing that people often don't consider with putting is what, what we call on ball roll impact ratio, but smash factor, right? They think that every putter and every ball, the ball comes off the same. and oh, People don't really consider the smash of a putter. So go into that a little bit, if you will. Yeah, sure. Well, I obviously don't like the word smash for putting. That's why we don't... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same equation. It's exactly the same equation. Uh, ball speed divided by club speed, but uh, I think the, the 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 real time this really came to fruition. I'm, I'm again going to go back a good few years, do a lot of work with Danny Willett at the time. Obviously, doing really really nicely, very successful. New putter comes out from Odyssey. Yeah. New putter comes out. It it clearly rolled the ball better. And in the lab testing, clearly rolled the ball better. And you can see the numbers. You thought, well, these are really impressive. Yeah. Didn't pay enough attention to it. I'll be perfectly honest. It didn't. Um, he goes out to play tournaments um, and basically struggled to get the ball to the hole. He was always short, always like foot, foot and a half short. Yeah. And once that gets into a player's head, it's like, oh, so frustrating. Again, his lines and things aren't matched. You know, you ran one four or five foot pass, then you just, uh, but everything was magical. But then you go back, data off the face, fantastic. You go back and compare the two putters and the impact ratio significantly lower with the new model. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this, this, <laughs> this means a lot. Yeah. Um, uh, this would be, yeah, four or five years ago now. And since we've gone in to look at mapping on the face, yeah, and then even Roll do a lovely putter where it's it's pretty the impact ratios across the face are yeah. very consistent through the through the the groove, the the groove and the groove. yeah, yeah. You, so you, I, I, again, I've done a couple of papers on this, presented different putters, different manufacturers. When you map uh, nine points on the face where you'd hit it on the robot, and you're looking for the same amount of energy to be returned where you strike it on the face, yeah. So that really, really fascinating. Um, you've also got, I did it with golf balls, golf balls, different balls. Yeah. Um, off, off the tour, 10 different manufacturers, I'm sure it was. We took them and you put them on the robot, same same putter, yeah. different balls, and they come off different, differently. Yeah, that's where, that's where the, the average golfer will tee off with one golf ball, you know, oh. lose it on the second tee, they've hit it out of bounds. You know, they pick up a completely different golf ball, and they. It, yep. How can you control your speed on the greens if you've got a? It, I, I, you can even get up to like, well, let's just say 0. 0.1 different in impact ratio. So if you put that into perspective, if that's oh, 10 miles per hour of ball speed, that's between 10 and 11 miles an hour of ball speed, basically. It it starts to certainly on the longer putts, it can start to have a a, a factor for sure. The different balls. And players complain of it. Um, Stricker and Tiger playing. Guess whose ball we had to play? Steve Stricker had to play with in the Ryder Cups and President Cups. Yeah, yeah, true. And then suddenly Steve couldn't match it. It didn't match. Yeah. The recent, not this year, but last year, Justin Thomas was complaining. The new ball. 
Yeah. He couldn't match his pace anymore. Still the same putter. Yeah. And it, it, it does it does happen. Um, it does happen. So you switch around a lot between putters and between balls. As an example, because of the technology in the even roll putters, um, the the groove width in the middle is quite far apart, so they're quite soft in the middle. So some yeah. people might struggle with that. But imagine if you were using an even roll for a while, and then you go to I don't know as an example like a Phantom X Scotty Cameron. They're yeah, quite firm. Well, there's not yeah. much grooving in there, so they come off the face quite a lot faster. Yep. And all of a sudden, you hit effectively the same speed of the putter at impact, but the ball can can go way different distances. Complete, yeah, completely different. So obviously, the, the material is one thing, and obviously, off center strikes is is the other one. Yeah, yeah it, it's a big determinant for for ball speed. Yeah. At the end of the day, one of the key parameters that we measure with with Quintic is ball speed. Yeah. So if you've got a if you hit ten putts and you've got a range within half a mile an hour of yeah. ball speed, you're you're doing a lot of things right. I.e., your club's being delivered pretty consistently, and you're fine in the middle of the club consistently. Yeah. Yeah. So the one that matters is ball speed. So how do you control ball speed? Yeah. Um, but I guess that at the end of the day, that's what what I love about ball roll is you've got all these different things that are, you know, are kind of formulating to, at the end of the day, do two things. Try and launch the ball correctly, you know, direction-wise. So we're talking both height. On height and left and right. Yeah. And then we're talking about ball speed. And that's, ball speed. Okay. that's it. And then spin. And then your true roll number. Where do you get to true roll? Yeah. They would be your, they're your key parameters. Yeah, everything that goes into this, thing to create you know effectively what is the ball doing because that's you know like you said earlier you alluded to the fact that the ball doesn't care who's hitting it or what's hitting it all it cares about is what happens and that's what's been got measured got you got to measure it yeah you got to measure it yeah. it's it's not possible to predict we we've um we did another study, 10 different putters. All, everybody's got like a ping answer lookalikey, haven't they? All the manufacturers have got a putter that looks like a ping answer. I mean, very successful, iconic kind of shape. But if I always remember, I put in the robot, I put all of the putters to two degrees, static loft. Yeah, and in the robot, I always put the shaft vertical. Hit putts, obviously the robot, the club data, identical, because it's in the robot, yeah, nothing's changed. But there were some big differences in how the ball behaved yep. in speed, launch, and spin. Well, so you're saying that you're saying that if you um, if you get fitted to a blade putter, let's call it a blade putter or an answer style putter, yep. every putter isn't the same. Well, hundred percent, it's not the same. But <laughs> they're different weights. <laughs> they've got different CFGs, and they've got different materials. They might look the same. Well, I thought. I thought. This is this is the generic fitting, right? You go for a, for a fit, and they go. Oh, well, your closing angle is this. Oh, this is the putter that you need. Stop it! Don't go there. <laughs> you wind me up. You mean it's more than that? Uh, just a fraction, just a little bit. But they just they just proved that the ident the look the same looking head. Yeah. It just performed completely different, and it's like okay. You want to get fitted based on just what your stroke is doing, yeah, that's only half the problem. Well, half the issue. I always say to people, you wouldn't have a track man or a GC quad, and I suddenly you can't have ball data. Yeah. Who, who would you who would use it? <laughs> you can't look at club, you can't look at ball data. You, you're not allowed it. Yeah. And whenever, uh, whenever I do a fitting, you, you simply have to hit the putt with every putter you know, that, that's in the equation because yes. every part is going to be different, even, even though they might look pretty identical. Exactly. Every you can throw, you start to throw them away and you, you, you whittle it down. Yeah. But um, it's, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, <laughs> you get well, me going. I guess the, the next, the next uh, line would be, we've talked about impact ratio. So we've talked about the effect of the ball and the club. Mm -hmm. insert or the material on impact ratio or smash factor um, but there's also the effect that the golfer can have by acceleration yeah 
Exactly. And let's be honest, we're all taught, well, I know I was taught to accelerate when I played the game. When I played the uh, game. I think I, 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 was, I went against it. I kind of grew up on the back end of acceleration being a positive. So I, I just, I never really had too much um, tutorage with my putting. I was generally quite good. So I, I may, I'm, maybe I guarded against people having an, an input on it. Um, so luckily, I never went down that route, and it never looked logical to me when I see the, you know, the the kid that I was playing with doing a really short stroke and then long follow through. It never really made sense. Oh, I was lucky, but it certainly has been a big kind of myth and misconception that you need to accelerate through the ball. Sure, and I think it comes back again to you want consistent ball speed. You want consistent ball speed. Yeah. Keep it keep it as simple as I can here. The the more you accelerate. Yeah, the more you accelerate, the higher the impact ratio. Yeah. People might go, how is that possible? You, you've got to, again, remember that the ball is not on the club for just... It's on the club for a long time if you use 100,000 frames per second camera. Yeah. Obviously, it's obviously not on a long... If you just look at it, and it's, it's gone. But if a club is accelerating, and you could, are you lucky enough to have 100,000 frames per second... The club's in contact for a good hundred plus frames, and therefore, which which club speed do you actually want to give <laughs> give it? That's another part of the maths. Which, which club speed do we measure? And with Quintic, it's always the frame we can measure prior to impact. Yeah. So even that potentially, okay, we're at seven twenty or a thousand frames per second. You can still argue that we're still under reading that. That actual the real impact speed is, would be a little bit more. Because it's still it's still accelerating, but the point I'm getting at is there's still force being applied onto the golf ball, yeah, and therefore it, it comes off faster. It comes off it comes off faster than the club that's actually deselling, yeah. As soon as it hits the ball, the club is slowing down, yeah. And obviously, ideally, we're after the constant one that, that seems a lot more achievable. It's, it's, if you could desell, I would I'd let you. But it just seems to be harder to do repeatably as as a putting stroke. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess that makes sense in a way, right? If you if you gave someone the the target of zero acceleration, yep. Arguably, they're going to be able to do that pattern more consistently if you gave them the target of a certain yeah. number of D cells. Negative two. Patterns. Yeah, negative two, for example. Because that the the zero D cell to me, from a physics perspective. The putter's close to the bottom of its arc. Yes. You know, if you're not helping the putter too much and the putter's just kind of swinging through impact, it's easier to get zero than it is to have some kind of manipulation to yeah. acceleration or deceleration. Exactly. You'd have to be slowing, the player would have to be slowing the club down themselves, which is going to bring in yeah, a whole other problem, I, I was, would suspect. Yeah. Especially face rotation would come to mind there. Um, and again, this, I'm, I'm going to go back a good few years. I was with my cine film on the green with, with, with Pordrick at an event in America. Just sort of started doing some work with him. And he goes, you want to go and film that guy? And he went over, introduced Cren Ben Crenshaw, it was. Yeah. You want to film him? And I, and I did. I, I, ne I never said anything to him. I just said, apart from, obviously, thank you very much. <laughs> he hit, hit some putts. And I'd kind of a thumbs up and off we went. And when you get back and you analyze that data, I, I always remember this. It, it was it was a constant acceleration. Yeah. It was as simple as that. The club obviously backswing, transition, zero, and as it started downswing, there was acceleration, and effectively he got to the desired speed, and then literally two, three inches prior to impact, yeah. the club was in um, cruise control. That's, an, that's another analogy that I like to use. It's like if someone said, if you're sitting in your car and someone said, well, by that lamppost, I want you to be traveling at 30 miles an hour. Yep. You're going to get your speed up to 30 miles an hour and then you're going to coast through that you're gonna, barrier right. at 30 miles an hour. You're not going to go, well, let me, you know, dawdle around a little bit and then, and then as I get towards the lamppost, I'm going to go from 20 to 30 because that's going to be hard Ooh. to judge. Yeah, a lot harder to judge. Yeah, like yeah, you're going on these 
smart motorways where you've got uh, all those roadworks, or whatever, and it's a 50 mile an hour. Just flip it into cruise control. Yeah. And you, you, you haven't got to worry, have you? Yeah. Everywhere you go, you, you're fine. Yeah. Um, so going in at, at a constant speed there brought the impact ratio a lot lower. And again, I, I'd flip again on its head. If you want consistent ball speed, it's a damn sight easier to control the club speed if it's going consistently. Yeah, to get that. If I want a six mile an hour ball speed, yeah, then if I've got a short backswing and a rapid acceleration, there's minimal room for error. Yeah. And as opposed to one that's going a longer backswing and is coasting into impact to, to give me my six mile an hour ball speed. Yeah. More margin for error for the player. Yeah. For the player. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, for sure. Which, which makes sense. And the positive that you're expressing of the acceleration, you know, if we get the face for free, we've got the speed control, right? That's the big thing that we're, we're getting. But we're yep. also getting the added bonus that the impact ratio is a little bit lower. It's down, yeah. We're getting speed control of the putter and the ball because it's coming off softer. Correct. Now, softer, just remember, one 1.6 would be quite soft for putting mm. once you start going over 1.8 1.9 that that's hot the ball's coming off really fast yeah and if you've got some crazy accelerations and we've seen it the ball can come off twice the speed of the putter yeah and i have seen players do that yeah. um so that that just all i'm after i'm i would like to have the player to have more feel more touch more control and the more control you have the better it is to judge the ball speed. Yeah. Yeah. A simple way to watch it is the length of the through swing generally is the same, or if anything, fractionally shorter than the back swing. Yeah. Would you would you say uh, this is just a thought that's coming into my head? Would you say that's kind of a similar thing that why um, with pitching it's easier to control the distance because the smash factor is oh. way lower than you know if you're using like a seven iron, six iron, etc. Some of the smash factors are virtually one to one. I think even yeah. some of the lofted clubs, you can get it to go negative, yeah. below one. So absolutely, hundred percent, yeah, one hundred percent. Makes sense. But yeah, it would be a big change to have. Um, it would be a big change, wouldn't it, to get the ball or well, the putter so soft, um, so soft. I don't know if you remember some of the, the data I showed. Putting actually got worse for a while. Remember when the hard ball came out, when the Pro V1 and the X yeah, came out? Yeah. yeah, and I, I, f I firmly believe this was down to the inserts and the impact ratio being higher because of the new golf ball that came out. Yeah. Just took it away. Now the manufacturers cotton on. They realize they're not going to change the ball because it, it's for driving 300 plus yards. So we've got to change the face of the putter to, to bring it down. Yeah. Bring it down. Yeah, because I suppose in that era there wouldn't have really been an insert. No, it'd be different milling types. Yeah. But yeah, sort of 9, 2002, three, four, it it actually started to get worse. Yeah, whereas the old Bellata ball, the professional ninety that we I'm sure you played with that one, it was as soft as anything. Yeah, yeah. And the impact ratios were definitely lower. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Um, should we talk a little bit about um, side spin? And then obviously get into rifle spin. So a lot of people think that, yeah. um, well, two things, I suppose. A lot of people think that, um, you know, half, I hear a lot of people saying, you know, halfway down the putt, it's, you know, doing something, you know, they've still got side spin on it. It's, you know, mm -hmm. the spin of the ball or something. They think that it can affect, you know, further down a putt than it actually can. And then number two, they think it's side spin when, um, you know, off the, off the putter, it's not actually the side spin that can, let's say deflect the ball offline it's actually the rifle spin more yeah it's more rifle okay so first thing to say once the ball's got to true roll 
uh, which, as you said earlier, whether it's a 90% of, or 75% of its journey uh, to go, all sides, all, all side spins gone. It's 100% overspin. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's 100% over. Rolling. The board is rolling. I've heard people say, you know, oh, that, that seems to roll out better with this putter. This, that, that's not no. possible. No, not possible. It, what would have happened, it would have got to true roll sooner with that putter, yeah. therefore wouldn't have lost speed as much in the sliding phase, and therefore when it got to true roll, it was actually going faster yeah. Yeah, than, yeah. Than, the, than the other putter. That's why it carried on, because once, it's, once both balls are rolling, the, 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 the physics is identical. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so from a rifle spin perspective it is it is hard to create rifle spin off a putter because there's pretty limited loft yeah yep pretty limited loft the, this is really the big reason why we don't like backspin and I, I, when i say this <laughs> if a ball comes off with backspin yeah when it's into then it'll obviously interact with the ground and it'll start to turn it forward. But there's got to be a point where it goes from negative to positive. Yeah. In that axis, backspin axis. Yeah. yeah so the point to, to, to effectively over overspin. Yep. Yeah. So it might be negative 50, it slows down to zero and then starts to go forward. Yeah. But the point of which it is at zero, it is very it's vulnerable. Yeah. Is how I'd describe it, is vulnerable to the other spin axes that could be on the ball. Yeah. Now, if you have backspin and side spin, yeah, so side spin, a face path difference or a toe or a heel strike, probably two most common ways of creating side spin. Yeah. You've got back and side. When it when the backspin is wearing itself off, you then the, the ball goes through a period of rifle spin. Yeah, it, it, it tilts. The spin axis is constantly tilting. It's not like you hit a driver. It's e once it's left, it's airborne, it's, it's easy. The spin axis doesn't change. Yeah. Um, but each time it interacts with the grass, the spin axis can move and, and, and oscillate. Um, so the, the point there is going from back to forward with any bit of side at the beginning goes through an element of rifle spin. Yeah. And it's that rifle spin that is the one that will make it deviate to the left or to the right. I, like, I kind of explain rifle spin as uh, if you watch snooker or pool, yep. when, when they're hitting down on the ball, they're creating rifle spin because they're making it spin effectively in, in that direction, right? They're, trying, yep. they're, they're, they're purposely trying to manipulate the ball to spin on the surface. Correct. And that's exactly what happens with um, the ball as it goes in from from backspin into overspin, that transition is that rifle spin can kind of take it a little bit offline. Well, it, it's it's grabbing, isn't it? The, the classic one, the snooker, if it's so far down on it, it, it starts out to the left, for example, and then it's spinning clockwise, clockwise, and then it'll grab, drag and pull in. Yeah. Same temping bowling, the elite temping bowlers, they'll put a lot of rifle spin on it, yeah. and it goes, and eventually the spin, will, it grabs, and then turns in. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You've got the other one, the American football throwing the ball. That's 100% rifle spin. Yeah. That'd be tough to throw the American football with Tom Brady, wouldn't it? If it was pure backspin, it wouldn't go very far. <laughs> and he wouldn't do look too good throwing it with side spin. It wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't go too well either. So that is 100% rifle spin. Um, I also describe it like if you got, if you had a ball and you literally just put it on the table. If you put side spin on it, it actually wouldn't go anywhere. Like spinning spin top. top. Yep. Right? Exactly. Why effectively side spin doesn't affect the direction of the ball as it's as it's skidding, right? Because if that side spin is, if you're just spinning it on the table, it doesn't move. If it's just as long as the spin axis, yeah, in that is 100% side spin. Yeah, it's yeah. straight up and down. It doesn't go anywhere. But if you put rifle spin on it, that yep. it moves. Go, go right. Yep. Exactly. So how, how much how much spin would you say then begins to have a, a negative impact on on a, on someone's putting? Sure. So the, the 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 goal is obviously not to have any rifle spin. Yeah. 
So if you keep, keep it simple, we always look five to one. So if you've got five times as much overspin to side spin, yeah. so 50 RPM overspin and you're below 10 side spin, yeah. the spin axis is as near as damn it in the position of true roll. Yeah, when it's struck, therefore doesn't have to change its spin axis. Yeah. Yeah. If if that's reversed and you've got more side spin than overspin, then the spin axis will wobble or wobble and wobble and then eventually go to true roll. Yeah. Yeah. But it's when the spin axis flips, goes from backspin to forward spin, that's the danger. That is danger. So if somebody comes in and they're they're, they're hitting putts and generally they've got kind of a little bit of overspin. They've got a decent amount of side spin, but they've got a little bit of overspin. You wouldn't be too worried about that. I, I guess also you want to change the side spin because, you know, ideally from a delivery standpoint, it, it's not going to be ideal. Correct. That I would go. I would go there first. What's caused that side spin? A face path difference or an off center strike? Yeah. If you fix those two first then there's a very good chance the side spin numbers will come down. Yeah. 100%. If I've got backspin and side spin, this player is going to struggle. I know they're going to struggle. Yeah. If you've got backspin and they're no side spin, not disaster, but again, it's something you'd want to try and improve. Yeah. You want to just tilt it going forward. Yeah. You want the ball, you want the ball coming out in the same spin axis as true roll. That, does that make sense? Yeah. So which is which is, you know, no side spin, and and just fifty overspin. overspin. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Exactly. Yeah. Generally, we, Quintet, we say above twenty side spin is not not great. Yeah, yeah. not not great. So that, I guess that that depends on the length of putt. So sure. Obviously, the harder you hit the higher, it, the higher the ball speed, the higher the spin rates. Sure. Right. Sure. Um, sure. 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 Yeah, neutral. You know, it goes back to the end of the day. The more neutral the delivery of the putter, generally, the the more beneficial it's going to be to the golfer, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So you're delivering the putter. Get out in the middle with yeah. a with a fairly neutral path. <laughs> and a face. Square yeah. face. <laughs> surprise! Surprise! The ball rolls properly. Yeah. 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 Correct. Yeah, that makes sense. And is there, do, you, do you find that there's, um, I know you've obviously done extensive testing with different putters, but do you find that different putters can have a, a, an impact on this? Um, different putters can help with overspin, yeah, angling of grooves. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. But what I'd say is often with the more, the more, f as long as the grooves are angled to, to create overspin, that that's important. If you've just increased the friction on the face of the putter by milling, yeah, guess what? You're also going to increase the side spin, yeah, as well as overspin. So you I've haven't seen, really I've yet seen lots of putters like that. Well, maybe lots of putters, but a couple of putters where the goal of them is to create more overspin, and therefore they've they've angled the grooves correctly. Uh, yep. But they've also increased friction on the face. So, you know, I've hit putts with a putter. I don't, I'm not, don't have the luxury of a robot like yourself. So I try and be as robotic as possible. No robot. okay. um, but my side spin numbers just go up dramatically yeah. because of the increased friction. Sure. So that's why we go five to one ratio. Yeah. Over spin to side spin. Yeah. So if they all go up, fine, but they've got to go up in proportion. We've got to be wary of that one. That, I guess that that also now leads on one one little thing. We'll we'll only touch on this. I think Go on. fear of um, going going on for too long. But um, one thing when I when I caught up with you, I think it was quite a while ago. It must have been before. It must have been pre COVID. Pre lockdown. Yeah. Um, when you told us the research that you'd done into um, blades versus mallets, and and often people, you know, I even had someone message me recently just saying oh i just got a mallet because obviously it's going to be better because um off center hits are gonna you know gonna be better for me they're not they're not going to go as far offline they're going to go better distance but um just go into a little bit about your research into blade versus versus mallet 
Yeah, sure. Again, again, this was luxury with Alistair Cochrane. I'm sure people are familiar with Alistair. Yeah. Looking at high speed photography at off centre hits and what why we'd see the ball potentially start right or start left with off centre strikes. Uh, it was more on some putters than on others, and there's like, what, what the heck is, what, what, what's going on? So let me try and work, work this one out. Keep it simple for you. Make sure I get it right as well in my own head. <laughs> <laughs> so the blade putter that has the C of G close to the face, yeah, close to the face, and off the same off center strike, yeah, the ball won't start as far left so this is in the toe so it, it wouldn't start as far right yeah but will go sh it'll lose a lot of speed it loses a lot of lot of speed yeah yeah so essentially the the blade putter yeah if you hit it off center will go closer in to the direction yes to the centered hit yes but it will go short doesn't go far it, 20 foot putt, it could be, yeah, as much as a couple of feet short. Yeah. Exactly. The MOI putter, where the C of G is generally a lot further back, much more stable, much more ahead, offset the same amount of off center strike, let's just say one centimeter from the, from the, the middle, will actually start further right yeah. than the blade, but will, won't lose anywhere near as much distance. Yeah. So, where the both putts finish, if you were to draw trigonometry, the one closest to the hole is clearly the MOI putter. Yeah. It's closer to the hole, but it's further right away. It's further right. Yeah. The, does that make sense? Hopefully yeah. I'll explain that okay. Uh, I mean, in the most simple terms, it's this is what I took from um, your research, was the, the blade with the center of gravity closer to the face. Yep is essentially more forgiving on off center hits for direction yes not for distance whereas the high moi mallet putter hit it off center you're going to go further offline direction wise yes compared to the blade yes so you're going to go closer in distance but you finish closer to the hole yeah so you, yep. lose, you, you lose less speed correct so the the way i take from this you want as higher moi blade putter as you can get yeah yeah <laughs> i mean i said to you in that moment i said to you well that's exactly why the ping answer style putter with heel and toe waiting kind of more hollow in the center center gravity more forward has been so successful yeah works yeah. you're trying to make you are trying to make it moi it, it's hollowed in the middle as you quite rightly say there's a bit of stability yeah but it's nowhere near as MOI as some of the spiders or some of the putters now that, that, that they're creating. But I think I think in that case, like a mallet putter will definitely help someone who's really not very good at striking the center of the face on long putts. Absolutely. Where the goal is just to get it as close as possible. That's two putt and walk away. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's that's you know, that's a big part of my fitting process now is actually it's not just well a mallet is for if the common thing mallet is for a straight back straight through no you know <laughs> a no. mallet is if someone comes to me and i really struggle to hit the middle on long pass well then maybe you'll benefit from a mallet because you're going to get better distance dispersion on off center hits exactly 100 percent. yeah that was really interesting to me because immediately people gravitate towards a mallet because they think it's more forgiving which you know in one respect it is but do you want to compromise then direction forgiveness? Yeah, and the, you've got to be, you would hope inside sort of eight feet that there's not sufficient enough direction. But I think, yeah, providing you're not crazy missing the, the middle, then um, yeah. as I said, going, keeping the MOI up and keeping the C of G closer to the face is definitely going to be advantageous. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. All right, last last thing, because um, we have to talk about this. Go on then. Kind of your new um, project, I suppose. The the overhead tracker. So obviously you've had the Quintic Ball Roll for a while. Um, we've had the biomechanics software for a while. 
but the new thing that I think was released, was it March last year, is your old overhead yeah. ball tracker? The, the tracker, yeah. Again, it's come from just a lot of these guys now got in these, these indoor slopes, these movable greens, just yeah. like yourself. Maybe in one. Re really interesting to see how that technology's moved and, and, and helping. Um, <clears throat> Obviously, from a from a coaching hat on, uh, I, I've got my progressive discs that get, they get bigger in size, five, ten, fifteen, all the way out to forty, to show what one degree error is. Yeah. I always love to see how players put those out. Then it was a case of well, let's get the camera up in the air and actually then measure what the ball does. Yeah, how it how it start. Where does it start relative to where the player wanted to aim, or they read the putt? Yeah. So it's, it's been really quite fascinating now to see, yeah, that, that develop. So if I've got a, if I, if I take it outside, I've got a boom tripod, I put it up in the air, it's about 12 foot up in the air, and I'm measuring up to 25 foot putts. But let, you don't have to go quite that crazy, but a player's got a 15 footer, they read it, however they read it, they do their, their normal thing whether it is aim point or whatever it is, that they're reading the putt just like tournament play yeah. and, I, and I get them to put a, a, a peg in the ground. Where, where do you want to aim? Yeah, where do you want to start this ball? You could even put gates in if you really want to. This is where I want to start the ball. Yeah. Software's up in the air. The camera's up in the air. It's being triggered. So just like with ball roll, the ball goes and then it captures the data and then it will track the path of the ball through everything so to give you apex to give you start direction um you name it and speed the true role point the point of true role yeah but i think again just just to see how i'm gonna say how poor people are at starting the ball where they think they're starting <laughs> i think that's that's probably the biggest eye opener thus far um yeah. but we're actually now able to quantify that so yeah. You put, you put a mark in the ground, let's just say it's six inches left of the hole for the break, but they suddenly realise we need to be aiming 12, if not 15 inches left on a start line for that to go in. Yeah, so that, That's the first thing that comes to their attention. Then you start to look at the speed and you, you're looking then at putts that have the same start direction and the tolerance in ball speed, say for that 15 foot putt, could be as low as 0.2 of a mile an hour different. Yeah. And it's like, holy smoly. It's like, now. No, you're, you're welcome to swear on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but then it, it, you come back to the, the ball roll and you've got the guy inside, guy go inside hitting putts. And we, you know, we've got the ranges, different colors where we want them to be after six putts, 10 putts. Yeah. And all of those ranges now are really making sense. If you haven't got a start direction of less than one degree tolerance of your target, you get out to 10, 15 feet, you're going to have no chance. Well, it's luck and judgment. Then it's ball speed. You've got to be able to start the ball within even plus half a mile an hour. We, we go blue as a, as a, as a robot range. Yeah. And I'm even thinking now that that's, that's too generous. Yeah. That's, that's too generous. Um, obviously on breaking parts, I'm talking here. Um, 1% maybe you'd be fine, but suddenly you get to 2 3% slopes, which they're more than happy to put pins on these days. It, it isn't enough. The tolerance is, is crazy tight. No, uh, it, it just boils down to, like we were, we were saying beforehand, um, before we started recording, um, about, you know, you have to have good control of your direction and your speed of your golf ball because the, the, the finite spaces that you have to in order to hold a putt like mm -hmm. launch direction wise and speed wise are so small that the better you are at controlling your speed and your direction i mean it sounds obvious the more putts you're going to get a chance because you can't get every putt correct but if no. you are controlling your golf ball well you're going to give more putts chance and you're going to hold more putts 100 percent. and then you ask somebody to hit 10 putts from the same spot and you're looking at the if you like red arrows as they all the, the the lines the trajectories of the ball all come out yeah. and I, I it's been really educational for me it's 
I'm a big believer is I want the player to learn. Yeah. That yes, I can put a trace on the green for you and tell you to hit it over that, but what's that told you? I, I what's that told you? I want the player to learn, read it, put markers out, put put discs out where they feel that ball's going to be breaking over. Yeah. And let's see how good you are. Let's see that's what imagination you, you have. That's a, that's an exercise that I do with, with players and they uh, a they've never even really thought about it a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and B, they're not very good at it because they never actually practice it. Is to just put some some discs out as a as an image of the trajectory of the ball. Yeah. Where, how do you think this ball is going to roll? And the amount of times that they get it completely wrong, and I go, well, isn't that a fundamental part of being able to read a putt? Is knowing how the ball is actually going to roll across the surface. Correct. We had a really, I say, really high profile player, top ten in the world. Say no more. He's, he would aim at the apex. Hmm. <laughs> and I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. Yeah. You, well, you open a whole other can of worms there, though, right? 100%. Now you've got to be like, oh, my gosh. It's, it's a difficult one, though, because it, very it's difficult. in the player, top 10 in the world player. Yep. And he's obviously somehow become very good at doing that. And something is adapted to, to make that happen. But yep. then it's the call of, what if I actually educated him and make him, can I make him even better? Could I make him better? That's a big call. Yeah, it is. But yeah. The, well, when when Joe Bloggs does that, <laughs> probably, you're probably okay at making them better. Yeah. <laughs> you got him to put a disc on the apex and you followed it out. And, and nine times out of ten, you could get the ball to go over the apex. Yeah. But it, 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 again, information. He was not. He couldn't possibly start the ball there. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I've got to be really careful now. That's why I'm really excited to, if we can work it out, maybe make my ceiling even higher. To well, get, it, yeah. Uh, to get that in. You gotta. You can't have it like a like the, the these wide angle lenses because everything gets distorted on the on the edge, yeah. and then it's not real. Yeah, you get the fishbowl effect. But that's the one. The one thing that's why I'm excited. We'll work it out that I can get it in my studio because you slope. Um, other other things that I've seen, we might, might not mention any names that are, are showing you trajectory of the ball and, and showing you the role of the ball, aren't giving you um, kind of factual information about actually what's going on. They're presenting you know really good images and stuff like that. I think is great, but it's mm-hmm. not giving you actual physical data in, in what's happening. That's why the overhead tracker is going to be great for me and my coaching is you get, you know, factual information, exactly what's going on, exact ball speed, exact launch direction. And then you can paint a really good picture of what is actually happening with each golfer. Yeah. And then, you know what, they're different left to right as they are right to left. Yeah. Then that, that aim bias creeps in. And it's like, they're different uphill left to right than they are downhill left to right. Correct. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But for, what I've seen, it, it's been an education, um, getting getting them to put discs out, getting them to see what's actually happening. Yeah, and and the importance of speed, speed control. Yeah, it really highlighted highlights everything. Um, it's it's been it's been interesting to to watch watch it and i'm really interested we won't go into it too much but i'm really interested to see like um hitting the same part on different lines actually the difference in speed i you know i've heard that it's not massively different on different lines whereas um obviously the light the initial start direction can change quite a lot the speed can't dramatically change Got you. So obviously the cone for it to drop in is so as slow, slow as possible going in front edge and then close to hard hitting the back of the hole. Yeah. The comparison and the difference to those two lines is quite big, but the difference in those two speeds is, is not so much. And a lot of the time, because on the braking putt, the ball's actually going uphill or, yeah. or certainly it's not. Yeah, so you're hitting, it, you're hitting it softer because you're wanting it to go slower at the hole, but you're hitting it harder because it's going up the hill at the start. It's got, to, it's got to go up before it comes back down again. There's a, there's a bit of that for sure. But, um, there's there's then, so much you can go into. Oh, yes. And then the idea is once you get, 
the perfect well once you've got a hold putt you you save that as your kind of your model putt and then let's see how consistent you are you know the numbers you've got to repeat yeah now now let's see how good you are yeah can you repeat it and then it comes back to technique rhythm for the whole pre pre-shot routine yeah. yeah you've done it once brilliant okay we know what the numbers need to be let's see how good you are at repeating it and then <laughs> that, that, that scares them again yeah. i mean it boils down to like no matter what you're doing um i mean we, we say it with putting but any part of the game consistency in in what you can control right consistency what yep. you can control is gonna breed better golf basically yep i would agree there yep i would definitely agree and there's some days like JT yesterday in the final nope. round. He, you know, we said beforehand he lost two strokes putting, but he said he felt like he was hitting good putts. And and you have those days where you do everything as consistently well as you can, mm-hmm. but you might hit a few lips. And if you hit, uh, generally if you're hitting lips, you're probably hitting good putts. You're not doing too bad, are you? Yeah. The things are okay. If you're never lipping out, you're probably never close enough to the hole. <laughs> Right? Sure. The ones that are going to drop on another day. Definitely. Right. I've taken up enough of your time now, I think. No. Very good. Thank you, James. So um, let's finish on. Obviously, we've talked about a, a, a few different products that Quintic Sports produce. So um, I've got the, the biomechanics stuff, the Quintic Ball Roll, and the OPA Tracker I've got coming. Yep. How can people find out more information about you and your products and obviously Quintic Sports? Sure. Well, Quintic.com is the main website that will have all the biomechanic stuff on there. There'll be a link to the ball roll and the overhead tracker. There also is Quintic ball roll website itself, QuinticBallRoll.com. Yeah. Um, even more detail. And then my own website, PaulHurrian.com, has got quite a few research articles and some tuition yeah i definitely encourage people if they want to learn as much as they can about uh putting to to check out those research articles they're really good and obviously check out um as much about paul as you can and then if you're serious about like doing fitting or, or putting coaching um then you know the ball roll and you know, arguably the biomechanics and the overhead tracker are things that you, you know, really should have um, in order to, to do the best coaching that you can. Yeah. And they, they're all synchronised now. That, that's the scary thing. Yeah. No hiding. There's certainly no hiding place. <laughs> it, it, then that, it comes down to coaching. It, it really then, gathering all this information, what do we do with it and how... How are we going to make a difference? I mean, that, but for me as coach, like I want as much information coming towards me as possible so I can um, paint the best picture I can of this golfer. I don't just want a front on video of, of what they're doing. I want to see what they're doing, not just on one putt, on several different butts, different breaks. I want to see what their stroke is doing from all angles. I want to see what the ball is doing. Mm. And that means you've got everything covered, right? Got it, which, got it, yeah. which Quintic has got everything covered. Well, yeah, I suppose lucky enough to be involved in both sides of it, the consultancy, working with athletes at one end of the scale and then having the software development guys in-house to, to right, tweak this, add this. And that's how Quintic's grown. It has evolution from coaches, from feedback. Yeah. Wanting... Um, from, where, from where it was even when I started using it, which I think is maybe five years or more five, yeah yeah um yeah it's certainly pushed on a lot since then and new products and you know faster cameras and and all this stuff so it's great brilliant right, right. thank you very much indeed appreciate your time and you're welcome uh, i'm sure we'll catch up soon when we're all well, this madness is over yeah all right cheers james bye bye for now bye Thanks again to Paul for sitting down for so long with me yesterday. I hope you have enjoyed both parts of this podcast. I'm really looking forward to getting 
the overhead tracking system as a new addition to my studio and looking, to, looking forward to learning more from Paul in the future. If you're looking for more podcasts to listen to, be sure to check out the other Golf Virtuosos podcast, Alex Buckner, uh, Short Game Specialist, Jack Bado, uh, Long Game Specialist, and Jay Kelly, also another Long Game Specialist with his coming soon. You can find us all on Instagram. I'm JJ Golf Putting. We've got Jack Bado at Jack Bado Golf, Alex Buckner, Alex Buckner Golf, and Jay Kelly, Jay Kelly Golf Coaching. Thanks again to Paul for taking the time to sit down with me for so long yesterday. Like I said before, always learning from Paul and I hope you're taking some good information from these podcasts. Thanks for listening and I hope to catch up with you all again soon. Mm-hmm.